All right, what's up YouTube? So I'm back at it, back working on the 125 here the next day. I just went to Lowe's and I uh, got some parts to figure out. If you didn't watch yesterday's video, watch that video so you can kind of uh, understand what I'm doing and why I'm doing this. But basically, the bar stops right here where the where the triple clamps hit the bar stop. There's not a, there's like a little bit of a gap and then the forks actually hit the frame before the, uh, the stop. So I went to Lowe's today and I picked up some material to try to um, bring this together. There's a guy on Instagram that I messaged um, that actually makes them, um, but I want to ride this thing before he actually can probably get it to me. So this is my temporary fix or maybe my permanent fix depending on how well it works. But went to Lowe's, I got some different things to tap in, make some threads. I got these little spacers that'll make more sense once we start uh, assembling stuff and cutting things down to shape. And then I got these little rubber pieces to actually maybe utilize as like a stop or something. I don't know. They might not work. They might work, we'll see. But I went to Lowe's, there are a few other little options to kind of tap into the side of the this bump stop to kind of stop it. If you drill a small hole and then tap them in, that could be the stop. I don't know, Those, that was my somewhat thinking. I'm gonna fab something up really quick, cut some pieces down, make some little measurements, and uh, kind of try to run you through or uh, time lapse some stuff. I also got a little, uh, I should have gotten this before, before, when I was actually building the bike. But a little bench grinder for like 45 bucks at uh, at Lowe's today. I was in there for like an hour and a half. Don't ask me how. This is what I ended up with after an hour and a half. But I don't know. I'm probably going to mount it right here or something. That way I can use the scotch Bright wheel and whatnot right there. Got to come over here, do uh, Ryan's seat cover in a little bit, put that on, and then uh, throw the header back on the bike, fire that up, make sure it's good. But really quick, if you guys are new, hit the subscribe button down below to uh, see this thing come form, take shape. Like the uh, 2018, once I get the wheels and stuff in, it'll probably another two more build series videos, but hit the subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up if you're excited for the build. We'll get started on this. Okay, so now I essentially have two of the same pieces, same length. Then if you put them together, obviously you have a tube or a square tube. Yes, I could have bought in one this size, but I needed the specific width this way and then the smaller width down here and they didn't actually have one at low. So this is what we're dealing with. And then uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, drill two holes on the end. And then on the inside here is why I bought this little spacer that will go on the inside in there. So then I'm gonna run a, uh, a bolt through and then it's going to bolt it that way when I bolt it down it's not going to kind of smush in or whatnot and it'll keep it a little more sturdy when the bar does actually go and hit it. Then maybe what I'm going to do is get this little stopper, cut it down a little bit, jam it in the end and then this will actually be the contact point on the, uh, the triple clamp. And then on the back side piece that's actually going underneath for it to actually fit around the, uh, the existing stop on the uh, on the head tube there, I got to cut out a little slot that way you can slide over and actually fit on the thing. This again, it didn't really take me too long to uh rough this up, make it a little bit cleaner so the edges are cut a little bit better and whatnot. But for a rough little thing on how it's gonna work, it's basically what this is gonna do, this is, I cut that a little bit too much too. You wouldn't even see it anyway, but with my OCD, I'd probably wanna do another one. But for right now, this will do. Basically what you do is you slide it over, then it's still gonna drill a top, tap in um, to, I don't know what size it is, what size this is, but just so I can thread it in and then this screw is actually what's gonna hold it from sliding on and off and kind of push it up into place so it can't slide off along with so it can't go side to side because this kind of blocks it from going side to side. It's a little bit too big, but these uh, pieces on the inside actually block it also. So. so it should work, I don't know. I mean, it's a little bit too long in the top. Doesn't really matter if you really think about it, but I don't know. we'll see. All right, so temporarily, I think I'm gonna run that. Regardless, I mean, it is, it's pretty sturdy on there, to be honest, it doesn't really move around. One thing I might change on it is actually move the little, the, the set screw back a little bit. That way it has more of a platform on the actual um, slot that it's screwing into, if that makes any sense. But for the most part, it just hits the sides of this, not the sharp edge, the fl I flatten it down. 
I don't know, it might affect that over time, but how many times is it really smashing into the side of that, like a couple times, like it's not that much. I don't know, it should be okay until I get the the legit one. If I end up actually getting that, if this gives me an issue, I'll probably proceed and do that. Nice little rig job here, it's not, I mean, it, it looks pretty rigged, but you're not even gonna see it behind the number plate, to be honest, so it won't really matter. You're never gonna see it from the, from the back here, barely you're gonna see it, and it almost, you can't really even notice. Maybe I'll even hit it with some black paint if I really wanted to go that extra, but for the most part, I'm just gonna run it like this, and uh, let me know what you think in the comments if uh, you have a better option, better solution, something else I could have done, some different, I don't know, give me some, uh, give me your opinion down below. Hopefully good, but you know, there's always gonna be those people, but regardless, that's fine with that right now. Like I said, still waiting on the stuff to do that. I don't wanna touch anything else on this bike until I get the wheels, that way I can just have one day and just go at it and finish it up. But uh, I think I'm actually gonna move over to uh, get this header on, crank it up, see how it sounds. It's probably not gonna sound any different, but move on over to uh, getting the Traction MXC cover on there for Ryan. As you can see, his uh, this was off his 16 things roach, and it makes his bike look beat. So uh, a new fresh seat cover will uh, definitely make it look a little bit better. Whoever did this seat cover, come on, really? <laughs> These things are haggarded, oh my god. a couple uh before so as you guys have seen in pretty much all the videos as i have them on like all my bikes but uh yeah they're pretty easy if you know what you're doing just to wrap it super tight and uh the biggest thing is trying to line it up like perfectly straight i had another how-to video on it a while back but trying to line these up side to side as even as you can on the curvature of the thing anyways the thing looks sweet if you want to check out traction on max i'll leave their link down below or just tractionmx.com or tractionmx on Instagram. Uh, yeah, those things are sweet, super grippy, super good. They don't rip. I'll have to get some pictures from Ryan. I'll go over there and see the actual, the seat on the bike. It's probably gonna tie it all together and look a lot better than his old, nasty, crusty seat cover. And then we're gonna fire this thing up, see how she sounds. Fire this thing up. It hasn't been started in probably like almost a month now or since I was at club, pretty much. No, I actually will grow to area. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know if you guys heard that or not, but it sounds weird when I when I rev it up and when it started. I don't know if that's just me or post your comment if you if you heard that. I don't I don't know. That was weird. I've never heard that before. I mean, aside from it sounding a little bit different, it does look a lot better. But I don't things sounded so weird. I don't even know. I'm still gotta put together some uh, graphics for this thing. I'm not sure what I want to do. I might go with like a teal kind of stripe with teal, some different teal in there. I don't know what I want to do. I know is that uh, it needs graphics and uh, cause the black plastics look beat, beat after like a couple of rides. So that's what happens when you get black plastics. The only time they look good is when they're brand new and they're super shiny. And then after that, they look like crap. Uh, yeah, graphics coming soon. I know a lot of people have asked about putting graphics on the, on the 250 here. Uh, yeah, I'm just waiting on them. And uh, it's not like I can even ride this thing anyway because the weather here has been so bad. Great spring we've had so far. Great spring, south of 35 and still snowing. So I'm hyped about uh, hyped about this spring and uh, riding season since uh, we probably won't be able to ride consistently for like another month. All right, so covering some stuff that's for sale finally um, to close out this video, but Basically, I've gotten so many questions, I'm just gonna show you guys and um, you can price it out. And the thing we got here is a brand new 2017 KX450 fuel tank, brand new. Everything's good, comes with the hardware, the little thing. And uh, that's for sale if anybody needs it, otherwise I'm gonna throw it on eBay because these things are like 300 bucks or something like that. So they're crazy expensive, but brand new fuel tank. Let me know, I have a uh, an Athena. 144 top end for a 2003. I don't need to open it up. Brand new piston and rings and everything else that would come with it. Obviously I'll sell this stuff a little bit cheaper just to get rid of it, but I literally have no use for this stuff. So 
shoot me a DM on Instagram at Tyler Monaghan and uh, the easiest way is through PayPal. So if you have a PayPal, it'll make it super easy. I can just send you a, a request and then you can just pay it and then I'll ship it out probably the next day or the next day following. But Infino 144 top end, that's for sale. Also these wheels are for sale. Um, they're pretty shot, spray painted up, whatever, I don't know. Here I have the, uh, the forks and triple clamps. I'll take these out. So I have the forks and triple clamps. They can definitely be cleaned up. I'll probably clean them up a little bit, but they're off of 2003 KX125, obviously. It's got different triple clamp on the top and different bar mounts. And it also comes with the front brake and lever and everything, the whole master cylinder and whatever with it. Um, it can definitely be cleaned up. And uh, if you need it or you want them, let me know, shoot me an offer. These will probably be the most expensive to ship for sure, probably at 50, 60, 70 bucks, depending on where it's being shipped. But yeah, these things will definitely not be cheap, but those are also for sale. Here's the bottom, you can see it a little bit better. They're a little bit painted up, but if uh, you get a little sand blast or the vapor blast, like I've said, or just a uh, simple wash up, it'd probably look a little bit better. Also down there, I have a 2001 KX125 swing arm. Um, that's also in good condition, so I have that. I also have the, uh, the O3 subframe for sale, there's that. Uh, I'm not gonna sell the pipe and silencer because um, you never know. I don't know, I just don't wanna sell it. You never know if something breaks or whatever. At least I have the original of this. So right here I have the, uh, the air box and uh, whatever for sale. I don't think anybody's gonna want that. I don't know, five bucks. Shipping is gonna be the most expensive thing. If anybody needs something, definitely let me know or I'm gonna put it on my website. Let me know if I should put it on my website or whatever's easiest, but if somebody really wants it, they're gonna go DM me on Instagram or leave a comment. As far as the bike, I'm gonna wrap this video up. Kind of a short, short little video here. But uh, yeah, I'm glad I kind of got that somewhat sorted. And like I said, this isn't possibly a permanent fix. May as well put the front number plate back on there quick. I can even do this one handed here. I can't, I can't do it. Hopefully, hopefully, like I've been saying, all the parts should be in by the end of the week. Hopefully Saturday I should have the video up. Hopefully before, as far as the wheels and whatnot. I don't know. Uh, I'm just waiting for the call, so we'll see how that goes. I still have to, I'm not gonna do it on camera, but to change out that needle bearing in the top end, since I did find the new one, um, I gotta take everything back off. And luckily it's not too hard, but definitely gonna swap out that needle bearing because a lot of you gave me some good feedback on yesterday's video or the day before. Uh, it definitely helps a lot. So shout out to the people that commented, let me know that I should. 99% of the people said to change it and some said it's fine, but I'd rather um, change it out for something simple that's not gonna take me too long versus it blowing up or something. And something happening and me grenading the whole motor because of that not my actual bottom end work, putting it back together. So a little side note, I know I said before I wanted to um, have the first ride be this weekend. The reason, the whole, I might not actually end up getting a first ride video out this weekend, it might be the next week, because Saturday is uh, the first, pretty much the first open practice. Um, there's probably gonna be mobbed, a bunch of people, and I want this video to be filmed really, really good because once I ride it once, it's not gonna look the same. It's gonna look a little bit scratch and blah, blah, blah. It's not gonna look the same as the first ride video. So I'm gonna try to get somebody to film an edit, film a, like a really good quality, like full out edit, like minute to two minute edit of this thing, rip it around the track and whatnot. And I just want it to be done very well and not the, the average like G7X point and shoot somebody out there just filming. So we'll see what I can do. We'll see if I can get a private session out at some track just uh, so you can hear just the two stroke, no other bikes, and uh, that's ideally what I'm looking for here. So I'll try to put some things together and hopefully next week get a first ride video out depending on if the wheels even come in and everything else. So that's my plan with that. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll go from there. Hopefully everything goes to plan. What am I talking about? What plan at this point? We're just going with the flow. Whenever it gets done, it gets done pretty much. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this short little video, definitely hit the subscribe button down below. Don't forget to follow the dedicated Instagram page for the build at Project KX125, along with my personal account, at Tyler Monaghan. Give this video a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys, hopefully tomorrow or the next day, with the updated video on the 125 and all the parts. Off of that, I'll see you guys in the next video.